Hello everyone. In this video, we will start a new chapter. That is chapter number 6 and the name of the chapter is Electromagnetic Induction. From this chapter, the topic that is to be discussed are the introduction to electromagnetic induction, the three experiments of Faraday and Henry, and Faraday law of induction. We have already studied about the electricity and also about magnetism in previous chapters. We also know that electric current produces magnetic field around the conductor. So, what we can conclude from this statement is, the electricity is related to magnetism. But the question arises, is magnetism also related to electricity? Answer to this can be explained in the following way. So it's just like a story. Before early decades of 19th century, people used to treat electricity and magnetism as two separate and unrelated phenomena. What happened in the early decades of 19th century is scientists like Ostrad, Ampere, and few others performed an experiment which showed that moving electric charge or current produces magnetic field. Or state experiment you have already learned in class 10 and also in the previous chapter which proves that electric current produces magnetic field. Then the people used to think converse of or state experiment can moving magnet produce electric field the question remained unanswered till the scientists Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry discovered and demonstrated that electric currents were induced in the closed coil when subjected to changing magnetic field. And this phenomena is called electromagnetic induction. So from this what we can conclude is magnetism is also related to electricity. So that we can say electricity and magnetism are interrelated. Why? Because moving charges produces magnetic field and also changing magnetic field will induce an electric current in the coil. So now we define electromagnetic induction as the phenomena in which electric current is generated by varying magnetic fields. This leads to the development of modern generator and transformer. About generator, you have already studied in class 10 to some extent, and at the end of this chapter, again we have to study about AC generator and the transformer. We have to study in next chapter in details. So here, I will just explain this generator and transformer very briefly. This is one type of generator where we use diesel and electricity will be generated. There are different types of generators, they differ in shape, they differ in fuel, etc. But the common thing that all the generator will do is to generate electricity. This is the picture of the transformer. Actually transformer is a device that is used to either rise or lower voltage and currents in an electric circuit. So these transformers are used in powerhouse to raise the voltage before transmission which is known as step of transformer and also used in villages to lower down the voltage for household use. So this high voltage that is supplied from the power plant will be lowered at different sub stations. So here step down transformer is used, here another step down transformer is used and then the Suitable voltage will be supplied to the each and every house. So in details about the transformer we have to study in chapter 7. Now the next topic is the experiment of Faraday and Henry. Just before I have said that Faraday and Henry they showed that changing magnetic field will produce electric current in the coil. So let us see how they did the experiment. Here we basically discuss about the three experiments. So the first experiment is, so here there is a coil. 
and that coil is connected to the galvanometer. So this galvanometer is used here to detect the flow of current. Name of the coil is C1 and this is a bar magnet having north pole and south pole. So this bar magnet will have magnetic field and this are the magnetic field lines. Now in this experiment what they did is they moved the bar magnet towards the coil and in doing so the galvanometer showed some deflection. The deflection in the galvanometer it means that the current is induced in the coil and again while pulling the bar magnet away from the coil again the galvanometer showed deflection but at this time the galvanometer showed deflection in opposite direction than to the previous. So it indicates that the current induced in the coil will be in opposite direction than to the previous and when the bar magnet was kept at fixed position then the galvanometer showed no deflection so which indicates that no current was induced in the coil and the second thing they have noticed here is the faster you move the bar magnet towards or away from the coil the greater will be the current induced in the coil and the galvanometer will show greater deflection and if the bar magnet is slowly pulled towards or away from the coil then very small current will be induced in the coil. So whole the experiment can be summed up as when the bar magnet is pushed towards or away from the coil the pointer in the galvanometer deflects which shows that current flows in the coil. Again here when the magnet was kept at fixed position and the coil was moved then also the same phenomena was seen. At first what they did is they kept the coil fixed and they moved the magnet and in the second case what they did is they fixed the bar magnet and they moved the coil but in both the case the same effect was observed now let us discuss about the second experiment of faraday and henry so in this experiment two coil was taken and first coil connected to the galvanometer and the second coil c2 this coil it is connected to the battery. Now this galvanometer detects the current if any developed in the coil C1 and this battery when connected to the coil C2 the current flows to the coil C2. So as we already know that if the current flows through any coil or any conductor then it produces a magnetic field. Then the coil C2 will produce the magnetic field and these are the feed lines and in experiment 1 instead of this coil and the battery there was a bar magnet so in that experiment bar magnet and here in experiment 2 coil connected to a battery they act as the same which produces magnetic field so here also the coil that is connected to the battery is moved towards a away from the coil so at that time the galvanometer showed some deflection which indicates that the current is developed in the coil C1 and the coil C2 is fixed and the coil C1 is moved towards and away from the coil C2. At that time also the galvanometer showed some deflection which indicates that the current is developed in the coil C1. Now when the two coils are fixed then the galvanometer showed no deflection which indicates that no current will be developed in the coil C1. So the current will be developed in the coil only when the magnet or coil which is connected to the battery has to move towards or away from the coil. And here too the faster you move the coil towards or away more current will be generated and slower the movement of the coil less current will be generated in the another coil. The summary of this experiment can be written as when the coil C2 produces the magnetic field as the current is passed through its coil and the coil C2 is moved towards or away from the coil C1 the pointer in the galvanometer deflects which shows that current flows in the coil C1 that is current is generated in the coil C1. Now we discuss about the third experiment performed by 
Faraday and Henry. In this experiment, the same two coil was used. The coil C1 is connected to the galvanometer, and here is the coil C2, which is connected to the battery. But here, a tapping key is connected. This tapping key acts as a switch. Now, in this experiment, keeping the two coil fixed, so here neither of the coil is moving, but they are fixed. Here, the C2 coil is connected to the battery and also with the tapping key. The current was induced in the first coil only at the time when the tapping key was pressed and released. And this galvanometer showed some deflection. But if the key is opened or pressed continuously, there is no deflection in the galvanometer, which shows no current is induced in the coil C1. Now we will discuss about the flux. And again, we go back to the Faraday and Henry's experiment because we need this concept to explain in detail about the three experiments of Faraday and Henry. This parallel line will represent the magnetic field line. So, whenever there is a magnetic field, then we can draw the field lines. So, here the magnetic field is uniform and we have to draw parallel field lines. And A represents the area vector and it makes an angle theta with the direction of the magnetic field. So we can see from this figure that all the field lines are not passing through the given area. So out of 9, only 7 field lines are passing through this area. How much number of lines are passing through a given area that we denote by another name called the magnetic flux. So here we define magnetic flux as the number of magnetic field lines passing through a given area. So magnetic flux is represented by phi b, phi b equals to dot product of magnetic field with area vector. So since it is a dot product, we can simplify as magnetic flux equals to b a cos theta and the SI unit of magnetic flux is whoever. This magnetic flux is a scalar quantity. So let me explain in short using the concept of magnetic flux again these three experiments. So here in all the experiments the same concept is used whenever there is a change in magnetic flux associated with the coil then only the current will be induced. If there is no change in magnetic flux associated with the coil then there will not be current induced in the coil. So here in the first experiment when the magnet is moved towards or away from the coil at that time the magnetic flux associated with the coil c1 changes and due to the change in magnetic flux the current will be induced in the coil and the galvanometer will show deflection so similarly in the experiment number two when the coil c2 as it produces the magnetic field is moved towards or away from the coil c1 then also the magnetic flux associated with the coil C1 changes and the galvanometer will show some deflection which indicates that the current is induced in the coil C1 and in the third experiment when this tapping key is pressed and released the magnetic field increases at the time of tapping and decreases at the time of releasing the tapping key here. The magnetic flux associated with the coil C1 at the time of tapping of the key and releasing of the key will change and due to change in the magnetic flux linked with the coil C1 then the current will be induced in the coil C1 and this galvanometer will show some deflection. So whenever there is no change in the magnetic flux linked with the coil then the current will not be induced in that coil. Faraday developed a law from series of observations made on those experiments and here the first law states that whenever there is a change of magnetic flux linked with the circuit and induced EMF is produced in the circuit and the current will last as long as the change in magnetic flux continues. Until and unless there will be a change in magnetic flux linked with the coil C1, till then only the current will be induced in the coil C1. If there is no change in magnetic flux linked with the coil C1, then no current will be induced in the coil C1. And the second law states that the magnitude of induced EMF in the circuit is equal to the time rate of change of 
magnetic flux through the circuit. It means that the magnitude of the current which is developed in the coil will be directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linked with the coil. So greater the change in magnetic flux, the current produced here will be more and lesser the change in magnetic flux linked with the coil then then the smaller current will be induced in the coil c1 so here the current is just because of the change in magnetic flux the magnitude of emf induced in the circuit will be given by this formula which is emf equals to minus d5 by dt so d5 by dt means rate of change of magnetic flux if the coil has more number of tons let's say n number of tons then this formula will be modified as e equals to n into d5 by dt here the minus sign indicates the lens law so this lens law we will be discussing in the next video in more details